हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज अमृतपाल सिंह वेलकम टू माय नेक्स्ट वीडियो ऑन अपाची हडूप गाइस इन दिस वीडियो आई विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट हडूप डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड फाइल सिस्टम व्हिच व्हिच इज एब्रिवेटेड एज एचडीएफएस वी ऑल आर अवेयर दैट एचडीएफएस इज अ इंटीग्रल पार्ट ऑफ हडूप डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड फाइल सिस्टम इकोसिस्टम राइट इट्स अ वन ऑफ द कोर कंपोनेंट ऑफ हडूप राइट सो लेट्स टॉक अबाउट इट्स बेसिक्स सो इफ वी स्टार्ट विद इंट्रोडक्शन इट्स अ प्राइमरी स्टोरेज सिस्टम यूज्ड बाय हडूप एप्लीकेशंस right so we all know it's a file system which is used to uh, store the information store the data so it's a primary storage system one of the important point about uh, sdfs its distribution right so distribution uh, we all know it had got, it has got multiple advantages with the likes of like if something goes wrong like one of the node fails still i'm having no uh, no worries because the things will be start will be still going on smoothly because we have also a concept of replication it means the bigger data is distributed across multiple machines right and that little chunks of data is further replicated as well so if one of the node goes down still the, the it will not be uh, affecting my whole uh, operation right so it's a fault tolerant guys one of the important uh, feature of sdfs is a fault tolerant it means we have a fast recovery from a failure if something goes wrong still we you can easily recover from that failure thanks to distribution and it's designed to be deployed on low cost commodity hardware it's one of the advantage of hadoop that it is cost effective big data framework because it is running on the low cost inexpensive hardware which we call it as commodity hardware right which makes it different from other big data frameworks and it also provides high throughput data access to application data guys if we talk about networking also like we always uh, want high throughput right so in the case of sdfs also it provides you high throughput right it means throughput means number of uh, work done per unit time so it means you can have you can uh, you can have more result in per unit time so this is what we want right it's give us high throughput so if we talk about the architecture this is a general overview of architecture right so in this case the major actors are name node and data node so we'll talk about this information in times to come in the upcoming slides so in this case the whole uh, working of sdfs is shown that how client is requesting name node to give the information about the uh, actual placement of data and how the name node is responding back and all right we also have a concept of replication racks metadata so we'll talk about it one by one so in this architecture we all know that it focus on two things name node and data node so what is name node it's a it's a hardware that contains the gnu or linux operating system and software or in other words we say that as a uh, name node is a basic daemon process of sdfs right which act as a master it means which instructs the uh, data nodes even in the company let's talk about the example of company over there the immediate boss okay instructs the employee to do the work right the same way name node instructs the data nodes to do the work so it's a master right so it acts work as a master in the hadoop cluster cluster means we have a group of machines working together that guides the data node means slaves slaves means because the uh, data nodes has to obey uh, data node has has to obey the uh, orders of uh, name node that's why it is termed as slave so name node is is mainly used for storing the metadata metadata is very generic word uh, we all know it's a data about data like in this case what information we are having like uh, file name file permissions where it is located across the cluster what is the rack id on which the data is located so all this information uh, name node is having so it means like when a client uh, approaches uh, to the name node so because client is not aware where to read or write the data right so it is first will be consulting the name node and name node reverts with the information to client let us let's take a simple analogy like when you uh, go to some hotel like you want to meet someone over there but you don't know the information about that uh, room number or means uh, so it means you don't have any information but you you just have the information about the hotel name okay so you visit over there so where you first you'll be going to the to the uh, reception right so reception is like my name node right you ask reception that please tell me uh, i want to meet uh, x xyz right so but I, i don't know the room number so the name node over there the reception will tell you that this is the room number where you can find him or her right so name node instructs the data node with the uh, with the operation like create delete replicate so all the basic administration right it all instructed from the name node 
so a data node what is data node I have, as i've already have stated it's nothing but like a uh, workers or we can say slaves so data node is a hardware also and having the gnu or linux operating system and data node software the data nodes are mainly utilized for storing a data it means actual task actual storage uh, done with the help of data nodes only so it's the one who actually works for the name nodes okay uh, which is responsible for storing the data so next talk about very important thing fly file bo block size so we all know that guys like uh, in the case of uh, uh, sdfs data is stored always in the form of blocks so what's the block size means uh, what's the uh, block size where the data will be stored it is 128 mb so you, you must be wondering that why it is uh, that big but in the case of uh, if we talk about simple linux os where the uh, block sizes are in kbs or in the oracle uh, we, we have a block size of 8 kb or 16 kb why it is so big right because of simple reason because uh, hadoop is meant for or it is designed for uh, storing and processing uh, bigger files from ranging from GBs to TBs, right? And if we have a small block size, it means we have a smaller denominator. Let's suppose I want to store one GB file in, in the file system. So one GB divided by, let's suppose if I'm having block size 8 KB, so one GB divided by 8 KB, it will be huge number, right? So the managing those, that number of blocks is, it's very difficult, right? So that's the reason I want to uh, keep the denominator big so that I'll be ending up with the lesser number, right? So it means I have to manage lesser blocks to store that one file. This is the reason, right? So this is the point guys, if we have a 400 MB file as we have 128 MB uh, block size, so, so four blocks will be utilized. First three completely utilized, 128 MB plus 128 MB plus 128 remaining, it will be stored in the fourth block which is the d block next we have a replication factor so what is replication factor so guys as i've already have stated this is one of the important uh, aspect of distribution where the data is divided into multiple small parts and those small parts are further replicated so replication factor ensures the availability of data because of the fact that we have the replication or copies available, it means if one of the node goes down, we still can able to retrieve that or recover this from a other node, right? It is uh, with the help of replication factor. So how we can define it? It's a making a copy of something and number of times you make a copy of that particular thing, it, it can be expressed as, the, as its replication factor. So guys, in the case of Hadoop, we are having the replication factor as three, right? So this is the default replication factor we are having. It means uh, which can be configured means one can change it manually as per your requirement guys one thing is there that we have a one command available set rep command available or we also keep this replication factor information in the sdfs hyphen site.xml file also while configuring hadoop it means it is customizable depending upon your requirement if we move further next we have file system namespace guys uh, SDFS supports a traditional hierarchical file organization means whatever uh, we have learned uh, in the traditional uh, file organization SDFS supports the same. It means a user can create directories store files inside these directories, right? So the file system namespace hierarchy is similar to those of the existing file system, whatever the file system we are having, right? It has almost the same, uh, it follows the same pattern. So one can create or remove files, move a file from one directory to another or rename a file. It means all the basic operations are possible in the case of SDFS as well. Rack awareness, very important uh, aspect of um, Hadoop, right? Uh, rack is nothing but uh, just a physical collection of nodes in our Hadoop cluster. Like it can, it can be 30 to 40 or 50 uh, nodes in one cluster, right? Depending upon our own requirement. So a large Hadoop cluster consists of many racks, right? If you have a bigger data to, uh, to store, it means you can have a, a huge racks as well. So what is rack awareness? So with the name of this, with the help of this rack information, the name node always chooses the closest name data node to achieve the maximum performance. Obviously guys, we want to uh, reduce the network uh, over there because that if we if there is a presence of network, it means obviously when you are sending a information over net uh, over the network, right? So the bandwidth will be consumed, right? And the cost will be there. So we wh what we want is that we want to choose the closest data node, right? So that we can have a 
maximum performance obviously if we have if we are choosing the remote node obviously the uh, the cost of traveling of or sending a data over the network always will be added up right so uh, while performing the read or write information which reduces the network traffic so the bigger biggest issue if we are selecting the remote data node right to work with it is the network traffic so we want to reduce we want to avoid that so that's the reason name node always chooses the closest data node this is called rack awareness it means the name node will be having this rack ids so with the help of rack ids we come to know that which data node is close to us right in the terms of network right so we always choose the uh, closest data node okay we always try to uh, choose a data node which is on the same rack right to reduce the network traffic so it's one of the important feature in hdfs now what is the advantages of hdfs we are we have talked about a lot of points first is fault tolerance so we all are aware that it has been designed the hdfs has been designed to detect faults and automatically recover quickly ensuring the reliability so uh, it is the uh, one of the biggest advantage why uh, sdfs is so successful because of its fault tolerance capability and to recover from the failures very quickly next is speed because of its cluster architecture guys uh, it can maintain 2 gb of data per second so it's that speed we are talking about right because we all know that hadoop distributed file system always work in a cluster environment so over there uh, it can maintain that bigger speed right next is compatibility and portability actually uh, sdfs is it's actually designed uh, to be portable across a variety of hardware right and compatible with several os so this makes it a uh, uh, very popular uh, among the developers or users next is scalability or scalable guys it means that how easily you can scale up or scale down the things based upon the requirement it means you can scale resources according to the size of your file system sdfs includes vertical and horizontal scalability mechanisms right so it have a that scalability pattern or a scalability advantage we are having next is another very important point data locality So what is data locality? Uh, when it comes to Hadoop distributed file system, the data resides in the data nodes, right? As opposed to having the data move to where the computational unit is. We want that we want let let let, let me uh, give you one example here. Uh, we have we have one uh, let's suppose we have we want to set up a a factory which can process the coal, right? So uh, we uh, and we have one coal mine available. We all know that coal is a natural resource, so coal mine is a natural resource over there. So what's the what will be your planning, right? Where you will set up a factory near to coal mine or away from coal mine? Obviously, you'll be setting up or you you'll be uh, putting your factory near to the coal mine. This is a point of data locality because by shortening the distance between the coal mine and coal and that uh, coal mine and that factory. right we are decreasing the network congestion right the same point guys instead of moving the data right you can move what data processing software or data processing algorithm this is called data locality right next is cost effective we i have already have told you that hadoop uh, doesn't have a specific requirement or special requirement it can work on uh, in on inexpensive hardware which is we, which we call it as commodity hardware which makes it cost effective next stores large amount of data so uh, as the name suggest it can hadoop can entertain a large amount of data this is one of the biggest advantage of hadoop that it can handle large files next is flexible in this case uh, there is in the in this hadoop there's no need to process the data collected before storing it right you are able to store as as much of data as you want so this is highly flexible right so these are some of the advantages of sdfs I hope, guys, uh, you must have understood uh, the uh, this uh, basics of SDFs through this short little video. If you find something I have said it wrong or something is not clear, please do comment on this video. Thank you, guys. See you next video.